Hi folks! Well, finally, astronomical darkness has returned to where I live in the UK. At the moment though it's only an hour or so, but uh, in the next couple of weeks it should be sufficiently long for me to get out and do some serious imaging and I can't wait. But meantime what I do for a bit of fun and interest is I thought I'd access the data from images relating to the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, you can do this uh, from an internet site called the Hubble Legacy Archive. It's free to use and you can download images and process them using your normal workflow. Uh, as I say, it's, it's, it's very interesting. You'll be, you can actually uh, access images that haven't been published before, that perhaps you haven't seen before. And it's also a good chance uh, to practice uh, your uh, processing skills and if you're like me, uh, they certainly need uh, improving. So, um, let's go and have a look at the Hubble Legacy Archive. I'm Dr Ray and welcome to AstroGadge. Okay, so here we are inside the Hubble Legacy Archive, which as the name suggests, it's simply an archive or database, as I said, of uh, various images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, so what I've done is uh, I've put in the search window here NGC 7635, which is the Bubble Nebula, and uh, I, I want to show you the images taken by the Hubble compared to my meagre ground-based efforts uh, for want of a better word. It's just mainly out of interest uh, just to show uh, if, if at all needed to be shown um, what, what the difference is but also quite interested in seeing what detail this can bring out as, as well. So as I say I've inputted the, the name of it. You can use coordinates as well if you like but it's simpler just to use the, the usual designation so again we, we, we'll simply press search and uh, here we have a whole load of files that relate to uh, the bubble nebula. Uh, so what's, what's good about this is actually there are little previews uh, of the examples of, of the image or little thumbnails that can help you decide what, you, what it is you want to download. And to do that you simply go into this um, tab here and up it comes. So as you can see there are various files, various images uh, that have been taken by the Hubble. Before we go any further uh, and download some of these images, it's, it's worthwhile uh, to say a little bit about the file names, the, the nomenclature of, of the different files. So uh, let's, let's look at this one here for example. Now this is, this is the, the, the file name here. So what this is telling us is this, this number here is what's simply called the uh, proposal number. In other words, the project number. So for example, if they're taking a picture of uh, this particular uh, region of, of the bubble um, nebula, they would simply refer to it as 07515, pro a project number by any other name. So that's a particular project number. And the second number is a number of times they've actually uh, visited or recorded this particular project. So in this case, this particular project, this was the first time they'd actually um, uh, imaged this particular uh, uh, part of the, of the bubble nebula. The next, uh, the next part here, WFPC2, stands for, wild, stands for Wide Field Planetary Camera 2. Now, <clears throat> that's a particular camera that was installed on the uh, Hubble telescope in 1994 uh, when it was replaced uh, in 2009 by the w w Wide Field Planetary Camera 3. And one of the things about um, the, the Wide Field PC2 is that it takes the, uh, 
a sort of mosaic in this almost stealth bomber sort of shape uh, which is a, a little bit well not annoying but it just means you have to uh, play about with the crop to, to get to get the image uh, the way you want it. Uh, wide field uh, planetary camera 3 uh, is more of a sort of square um, more, more of a square sort of frame. Um, the next number is uh, stands for the filter they've used. So this, this particular filter, this particular image was taken with a filter of 487 nanometers and the N stands for narrow band. So it's a narrow band filter. Okay. The other designations you can get are uh, W which is, uh, they refer to as wide band. We would probably refer to as, as amateur astrophotographers as broadband. So it's, just, so it's, so it's basically a, a 487 nanometer filter and it's, it's a narrow band filter. And again, uh, the WF just means it's a wide, wide field camera that's been used. That, that's how the uh, nomenclature works. Now, if you're going to download um, a number of files say for red, green and blue um, integration, then you're best going for the same um, proposal number and visit number. If you don't, there's a chance that the alignment might not be exactly the same and cause you problems later. So it's always best going for um, images relating to this, these numbers here. So if we go along here, we can see this is the same uh, project or proposition number and it's the same visit. But this time it's the same camera, but this time they've used a, a filter at 502 nanometers. Okay, and likewise, if we move down again, we can see that uh, again, the, uh, the same project number, the same visit number, but again, they've used a, again, a different filter, 656 nanometers narrow band. So the, these are the, the, the three files I'm going to download that, that, that correspond to red, green, and blue. To download these files, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you simply have to click on, on the, the source that you want. Now, uh, for, for our purposes, uh, it's the science fits that we want. It's in the fits format. Uh, uh, the, you, you can download other uh, source files, but they contain a lot of information that really isn't that well of interest to me at least. Uh, but if you're curious, by all means, download them and, and and see what's in them. But for imaging, dead easy. Just click on uh, the science tab to select it, and you can see it's added to cart. Don't worry, you're not going to get charged. Okay, there's, there's no charge for this. Yeah, it's just a cart. The next file we're going to select is, a, a, is using the 502 nanometer filter. And again, select that. And the third one we've decided to go for is, uh, again, the same proposition number, same visit number, uh, same camera, but it's using 656 nanometer um, filter, narrowband filter, and again, we're going to uh, just add that to the cart. Once they're all um, selected and added to the cart, and you just simply scroll up, you'll simply see uh, your cart. As I say, you don't have to pay for it where your files are. You simply click on that, and there's the files that you've um, selected. Now you've got different options here. I, I prefer uh, a zip file. And then you simply press Fetch. HLA data, and you'll find that the uh, the files are downloaded uh, to the, the the folder that you you've selected on your machine. As I said, the, these files are in FITS format, so if you've got PixInsight or any other um, processing software that deals with the FITS format, download them or download them straight away into the program and perform um, a stretch on them um, so that they're they're non-linear and uh, as you can see here that's exactly what I've done with each file. Now the files are integrated files they're, they're basically all, all the, the files have been calibrated they've been calibrated for bias, darks, 
and flats. So what you've got is an integrated uh, image uh, from the raw data uh, for each uh, filter. So there's no need to stack anything that's been done for you and it's been calibrated. So you simply got the calibrated stacks for each filter here. If you haven't got PixInsight, you can you can use uh, Photoshop or, or, or something similar, but first you have to convert the FITS, pro, uh, FITS files into TIFF files. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But first, let's just uh, show you what happens in PixInsight. So just like you'd uh, normally do to combine um, monochrome images into a, a color uh, image, uh, whether it's broadband or narrowband, uh, you select the different files and allocate them to or map them to a particular red, green or blue channel. Now in this case it's the, the, the filters are very different from the normal kind of filters that we're used to. So what the, the way we do it is simply take the longest wavelength, so 656 nanometers is clearly a longer wavelength than 502 which is longer than 487. So take your longest wavelength, in this case 656, and allocate it to the red channel. Okay. 502 is the next longest, allocate that to the green, and 487 to the blue. So just to reiterate, the highest number of the filter goes to the red, the middle one goes to the green, and the smallest number goes to the blue. Okay. And once you've done that, just as you would in any other um, processing uh, in PixInsight, let the thing do its, its job. And here we've got a color image. Now we can use dynamic crop, obviously, which is, which is what I've done. And you can do the usual type of processing that you're used to doing in your narrowband or broadband uh, image processing. So what I've done here, as I say, I've, I've, I've performed a, a dynamic crop and I've done various things. And I've, I've ended up with, um, dare I say it, two, two different sort of color palettes. And I eventually decided on this one here um, just simply because I thought it looked better than that. I, I don't know what you think. Maybe I got it wrong. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I decided to, to go for this image here, obviously, with a dynamic crop, etc. And this is pretty much what it looked like uh, once I'd finished toying about with it. Um, so, yeah, we have a not bad image at the end of the day. Um, again, we'll come back to that in a second. Here's the uh, image of the, the bubble nebula I took uh, about a year ago. Uh, it's a narrowband image. You used the 460EX uh, with uh, sulfur 2, oxygen 3 and hydrogen alpha filters. Uh, uh, 460EX is, is a monochrome camera. And uh, I processed it uh, using dynamic blending using the 4X method that I, I've talked about in a previous video when I was looking at the Optolong filter. <laughs> There's no contest really, is there? I mean, um, so what, what I've done is I've reorientated the, the Hubble image that I've processed and uh, so it sort of corresponds to the orientation in, in, in my effort. <laughs> There's no contest like I say, but what we've got here is this image here is uh, in this region here you can see that stars here and we've got this little cloud or nebula complex gases complex here uh, obviously in much more detail interesting uh, interesting nonetheless isn't it uh, a different kind of color palette but you, you get the idea that it's it's incredible to actually look at this in more detail uh, and, and as I say, some of the, 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 well, a lot of the images in this archive have never actually been published before. I don't recall seeing seeing this 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 one here being published. But so it's, it's very interesting uh, 
just to see see the difference. <laughs> so, um, bit a bit of interest, bit of fun, really. The next uh, object uh, uh, or Hubble image I thought I'd download uh, relates back to again a video I did recently regarding annotating um, deep space um, objects uh, in your images, and this was the one uh, regarding Messier 106 that I, that I showed you recently. But what I thought might be a bit of fun is is this galaxy here, NGC 4217. Um, just to see what the, what the Hubble <laughs> telescope makes of this this image, so let uh, I, I went ahead and downloaded um, uh, uh, the, the files relating to this particular object. And just as before, again you put the object in, you search for it, and it will come up with a number of um, thumbnails relating to the image session uh, uh, relating to this object. So again, we can see here. Um, there's the proposition number, there's a visit number. It's taken with the Wide Field Planetary Camera 2. This one was taken with the Wide, wide Field ca uh, Planetary Camera 2 as well. And on it goes. So, again, what I've done here is I've downloaded uh, one uh, that corresponds roughly to the blue region of the spectrum, one that roughly corresponds to the green and one that roughly corresponds to the red okay so again just gone through the usual uh, click on the science tab and uh, they're all added to the the cart ready for download and again all you have to do is, is click on the the fetch hla data and everything's downloaded so again you can see the stealth bombers <laughs> uh, shapes in the uh, different uh, windows um, relating to each different filter so here's here's what's going to be in our red channel here's what's going to be in our blue uh, green channel and here's what's going to be in our blue channel and again I, i've stretched them using histogram transformation and applied a, a, some curves transformation to them as well and uh, just like the last time, uh, the last image, I've also applied a dynamic crop uh, to each and mapped them to the relevant colour channels and had a bit of a play and this is what I came up with. <laughs> it's really nice, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, I love to say this was uh, an image I'd taken, but that, that would clearly be lying. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's obviously the, they've not imaged the whole uh, galaxy, but what they've, they've done is, is, is uh, taken on the uh, the uh, dust the dust lane. Now you can see there's there's a few artifacts in, in this image, uh, and that's to do with the camera itself. Uh, it's to do with how the chips laid out or the different chips in the camera laid out. And I'm going to show you a quick fix how you can get rid of these quite easily. But first, um, let's see how that compares to the image of this galaxy that was taken in the the, the one that I uh, imaged 106 in. Well, here we are <laughs> again. Look at the detail, and it. it's absolutely incredible. Um, Having said that, you know, it's uh, my image isn't that shabby, I don't think. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> uh, nowhere near the detail that this gets. So again, it's it's just an interesting exercise, I think, to to particularly if it's an object that you're not uh, too sure of, or you know, uh, in this case, NGC four two one seven. It's it's not the most well known galaxy as well to me, anyway. Uh, but it's just nice to to see <laughs> an image of it that, uh, that Hubble's taken. Again, I'll show you how to get rid of these artifacts uh, that do occur, particularly in the um, Wide Field Planetary Camera Two, the old the old camera that was replaced in nineteen two thousand and nine. Sorry, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. 
But first, um, as I said, uh, I've been using uh, PixInsight here. I'll show you uh, how to uh, convert the files into TIFF files so that you can use them with Photoshop. To do the conversion uh, so that you can use your files in, in Photoshop, you have to download a, a particular piece of software called Fitz Liberator. It's free and it does exactly what it says. It, it basically converts Fitz files into TIFF and it allows you to uh, stretch them um, uh, before obviously converting them so you can use them uh, in a non-linear form. Did this particular file which is a 814 filter into Fitz Liberator. You can see it's, it's nicely loaded up here. Once your file is loaded, uh, you need to change the um, dynamic range um, scaling to this particular configuration here, a ASYNH. Okay, and what you'll be presented with is this little um, curves, curves the dark and white point uh, box. And what to do? Simply move it over to the peak of the image, like so and you'll start to see um, your image getting stretched and it's really just a question of playing with the dark and white points to get the best um, to get the best uh, picture you can or image you can uh, for later manipulation so that looks reasonable uh, and again and once you're happy with that, simply press save uh, into a particular directory uh, that you want to, to save these files to for, for use in, in Photoshop later. Here I've uh, loaded up the image of NGC 4217 and as you can see it's got these kind of nasty little artefacts, uh, again due to the camera uh, construction. And uh, you probably, if you use uh, Photoshop for your uh, processing, more more aware of uh, this feature than I am. Um, but essentially, it's called the healing tool if you're not. And it basically, it samples the background and replaces the artifacts simultaneously. It's great. So here you can see, obviously, a join in a mosaic of some sorts with the different chips, as I understand it, are physically linked. But um, simply drag it down, let go, and it's magically gone. And again, if we simply move it across here, gone. And great. Oops. Gone. Wonderful. Obviously. <laughs> should take a bit more care of it than, than, than I've just done but it, 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 it cleans the image up nicely. Well folks that's the end of that video. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and uh, uh, as I say it's it's all free to use and download. It's uh, You can access a lot of material that's never been published before and I, I, as I said you, you can use it as a method to uh, practice your processing skills and um, as I say a bit of fun, a bit of interest why not give it a go? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video. If you have, uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And uh, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. It just means you get heads up in any uh, material that uh, I may produce in future. And um, again, thanks for watching. Meantime, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.